So just a quick overview of the knee and things that can go wrong and injuries that you can get. A brief summary of the anatomy. So you have an articulation between the femur and the tibia with the patella, which is obviously the largest sesamoid bone, which means bone inside of a tendon uh, inside of the body. Uh, it's stabilized in basically through some major ligaments and the meniscus and the general shape and soft tissues around the knee. Um, the major stabilizers of the knee would be the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament, and then the and they st stop um, translation of the tibia moving forward and backwards, uh, respectively, against the femur, and then the med medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligaments um, that are responsible for resisting valgus and various stress upon the knee. And then the patella. Uh, the quadricep tendon, patella, and patella tendon make up what's known as the extensor mechanism, which is a way of um, allowing your knee to extend um, with the use of the quadriceps. And then you have the menisci, which are nature's shock absorbers, which uh, prevent, uh, which allow you to basically run pain free without having bone on bone rubbing together. So the anterior cruciate ligament goes from the lateral condyle of the femur and then it attaches to the anterior. Uh, intracondylar area. Anterior is where it gets its name from. So ACL means um, it's on the anterior part of the tibia, whereas the PCL goes from the medial aspect to the posterior aspect of the tibia. And then the MCL and the lateral collateral ligament, they prevent valgus and various opening, and you have the menisci, as mentioned earlier, in the shape of the medial menisci and the lateral menisci. And those are avascular structures for, for the most part, menisci. They don't really have any nerve receptors in it, which Basically means um, they don't they they don't regenerate particularly well. Uh, for if you have a meniscal tear, then you might need arthroscopy to repair that. So injuries that you can get the ACL is classically ruptured in sports, playing football and, uh, and and sort of higher impact sports and skiing as well as a major ACL rupture and. The, the crucial thing in the history is that if you rupture your ACL, you're unable to walk afterwards, you're limping around, and your knee will swell up quite considerably quite quickly. So you always ask someone that's been playing football, were you able to play on? And if they said, yeah, we, I played the remainder of the game, it's unlikely that they ruptured their ACL through doing that. And then symptoms you get down the line would be giving way. So when the patient walks up a flight of stairs, will feel that the, the, the tibia is moving, um, and they might find that sensation a couple of times a day. And then you can do the anterior draw test. So basically, you um, flex the patient's knee to roughly 90 degrees. You sit on the foot and you aim to just gently move the tibia forward. And if it moves forward and becomes prominent, then that is anterior draw test positive, And that means your ACL has been ruptured. If there's no end point, that means a complete rupture. If it gives slightly and then stops, that's a soft end point. Um, and that's sort of a grade two. Lachman test is a similar mechanism, but it, you just don't sit on the leg. You flex it to 30 degrees and you hold the, the femur and the tibia and you move them uh, against each other. And then you'll end up getting an MRI, and then that will confirm that the ACL is ruptured. And depending on the patient's age and demographics, you'll offer them uh, a, re a repair of the ligament. And you can do that either using hamstring, hamstring grafting or patella grafting depending on uh, surgical preference and demographics, and that's if um, the patient is a suitable candidate. And for the most part, they are because they're young, you've been playing football or skiing, and you'll repair them. Uh, PCL injuries are less common in the dashboard type injury, so that's basically the patient's knee is flexed, it's, the dashboard is rammed into the tibia, and then it causes it to move backwards and it ruptures the PCL. That's less common, it's less common to get instability because the knee capsule will provide a lot more stability. Um, and then you do a posterior draw test, which is basically the exact same. You sit on the foot with the knee flexed and you try and push it backwards. And the posterior sag basically means that you put both the feet together and you uh, flex the knees up to 90 and then you look between them. And if one of the tibias is, is sagged backwards, so that means it, the posterior uh, cruciate ligament is ruptured in that case. And it's, it's rare to get an isolated complete rupture. So the unhappy triad seems to come up, and that's basically you have a valgus stress, or someone smashes your knee from behind, uh, from the side, so rather, and that with your knee flexed. So you might have been running, trying to avoid a tackle, and someone tackles you at the knee. Um, and there's basically it's a mixture of a rotational valgus force going through the knee. It's a rotational force which, which 
causes the MCL rupture, so medial collateral ligament rupture. ACL will then rupture, and then the lateral meniscus will rip. And the lateral meniscus is very uh, difficult to repair, and it's a difficult injury. So if you have a lateral meniscal damage, it's much worse than having medial meniscal damage, and it might sort of end your sporting career prematurely. And they will need surgical repair, and they need surgical repair relatively quickly. Um, ACLs, you tend to wait and make sure everything settles down, but with lateral meniscal injuries, they have a tendency to stick down and, and scar, and you have poor outcomes.